contest of the weekend comes from uh, Newcastle tomorrow, and that is, of course, the Northumberland Plate. So delighted to welcome in to join us, hopefully on Skype behind us, Kevin Blake. Great to see you. It works. We're in business. Kevin, how are you? Have you recovered from a long week at Ascot? Yeah, just about, Gina, just about. I went away for a couple of days there to recharge, so... You know yourself, sometimes when you come back from a break, you're more tired than you are when you left, but we're, we're getting there. <laughs> I, I would have liked to have done the same. Sadly, it's been all systems go, but that will not stop us getting stuck into the Northumberland plate. Um, good weekend, isn't it, in Newcastle? And we look forward to this, this sort of staying contest, which obviously has changed shape and nature. And now we're on the Tapita, Kevin. Just give us a, a brief overview of, of the kind of standard of race we're looking at this year. Oh, look, I think it's lifted in a big way, Gina, because, look, we all know the situation this time last year with prize money, etc., due to COVID. Um, the, you know, that was a wonderful pot, took a, took a big hit, and we're back up to a, a £150,000 race now, and, you know, the, the, the connections have responded. Look what we have as top weight, True Shan, you know, having missed the, the Gold Cup at Royal Ascot, he's going to bid to carry, uh, you know, 10 stone four, a rating of 118 and tried to give all that weight away to his rivals. You know, it's it's very, very rare you see a horse try to defy that type of a rating um, in the modern age in, in a handicap. So for that reason alone, it makes it absolutely fascinating. And, and look, it's just a really interesting prospect, Gina, because this horse, you know, at the back end of last year, he put in this performance in Ascot that stamped him as a real up-and-comer in the staying division. You know, he's, a, he's absolutely hammered up here in the, in the long distance cup you know beating search for a song runs on to second you know jewel iris and ledger winner um stradivarius has dropped out of the back of the telly at this stage um, didn't run his race on the day but i thought his comeback at chester was very good things didn't really go plan for him i think it's fair to say over an inadequate trip and um, he's had one spin on, on the all the, wow remember how you got me all teed up gina this is him he had he ended up having to get into the race and probably earlier than Holly Doyle would have liked, um, kicked for home and Japan just got the better of him late over a trip that would have been much more to Japan's liking, I feel. Um, so I personally, I was quite forgiving of that. Um, I thought he, he looked to have a, an excellent chance in the Gold Cup um, last week. Unfortunately for connections, the rain didn't come soon enough for him. Um, but look, he's had one outing on the all-weather in his life. He's won. Um, that, was, that was at Wolverhampton. He's at Newcastle here. It, it's a fascinating move from Connections to have a crack at it. Uh, and I just can't wait to see how he gets on in it because, like we say, we don't get to see it very often. And um, you'd like to think the course and distance will suit him. This type of race will suit him. He's a horse that can be quite free. Um, so, you know, having plenty of pace and cover um, to help him relax will, will no doubt be a help to him. But he's not my pick, Gina. He's not my pick. OK, um, we're going to get we're going to get to that on the pace front, though. I mean, obviously, we've got five from the Mark Johnson stable. So you'd have thought there will be an honest pace. But I wasn't sure where it would necessarily come from. I know they've gone on with Galata Bridge in the past, but they'll probably want to get him some cover because he can be free. How did you see it, uh, the spread of pace across the field here? Looking at it, Gina, look, I think the way the way this race tends to go, there tends to be a bit of a rush on for position early on, and understandably, there's plenty of turning to do in this race. So, you know, while we have seen the last couple of years that it can kind of surprise you and be run at a below average pace, looking at the makeup of the field and the candidates to go forward, uh, my, the conclusion I reached was that I'd be surprised if it wasn't run at least at an average pace. And, you know, one would hope maybe even a little bit quicker just to just to get them sorted out, because this is a big field, um, you know, around plenty of bends. It can get quite messy and be quite difficult for horses that are held up off the pace to get into it if they don't go a decent pace. So, um, you know, there's there's evidence to suggest it'll be a decent average, but I'm certainly hoping that's the case. Well, we have got a couple of other inserts. I don't know if I'm going to hit on your selection here, but let's have a look at Dubious Affair, um, the filly here who just missed out at Royal Ascot in the Copper Horse to Antiaz. Um, really progressive profile for Charlie Fellows, the type of horse he does so well with. Um, what do you make of her chances? And, and obviously, she's going to have to have recovered from this a week ago, which is a factor. Well, that's it. But look, has to have big claims if she bounces back. You, you see here, just didn't, you know, even before this, you know, didn't get quite the clearest of passages, has flown home, just been touched off. You know, that's a high level of form to bring into the mix here. You know, and like you say, just very progressive is, you know, from where she started off in handicaps, you know, she's gone up, I think, 34 pounds in total. So, you know, you have to strongly consider her. The question mark is, 
will this come a little bit soon after Ascot? That was her first run of the season, so one would hope that she uh, that she'll have bounced back. You know, she you you look back for evidence to her campaign last year, and you know she backed up quite quickly a couple of times, not quite this quickly, but a couple of, relatively quickly a couple of times last season, and it didn't seem to bother her too much. So one would hope she'd be able to run her race again, and and if she does, she she has to be a big factor. Kevin, I'd be quite happy to see you in shot, but the, the team have decided they'd rather just see Trushan again, unfortunately. <laughs> but you're back Good and judges. then a scene of bloody, I'm not sure why that played. So, so apparently it did its own thing, the system. But tell us who you fancy for the race then. Who's the horse you came down on here? Well, Australis was the one I sided with in the end, Gina. Um, and, and look, the case is quite clear for him. He's relatively unexposed on the all-weather. He's had two runs, sorry, at Newcastle, I should say. He's had two runs at Newcastle. Um, ran very well on both occasions. This is one of them here. Um, was all wrong at the weights um, this day. He finished a second to Island Brave. I thought it was a very good effort. Look, he's a tough, hardy horse that battles away, and he's likely to be one of those that's prominently placed. He can make the running, doesn't need to. Um, and you just get the impression now, having gone so well in the race last year, he was second in, that, in, in the race last year, that his connections may just have had a little eye in the from a little way out, you know, Roger Varian is a great target trainer and I'd be quite forgiving of his run Epsom last time. It was his first run for, for seven weeks or so. Um, I don't think that mile and a half trip was ever going to suit him. I don't think the track was ideal for him either. And it just wouldn't be a surprise if, if that run was, was, was penciled in with a view to getting him spot on for this. So... I thought he was a, an appealing prospect at the price, Gina. Yeah, eight to one for Australis uh, for the big race. Then you've also gone to the uh, Northumberland Vars, the consolation race, and you've picked out Blow Your Horn here. Tell us a little bit about about this one's chances for Charlie Fellows and, and Jamie Spencer. Yeah, another contender for Charlie Fellows. Um, just a horse that look has been a slow burner. Um, he, he's bred to be that way in many ways. He's by Golden Horn, and he's just really come alive as he's as he's matured and gone up in trip. Um, and we've seen him, uh, you know, his two both his wins have come on the all weather. He's a winner, previous winner at Newcastle, as we're seeing here. And I thought his latest run at Chester now was, was very forgivable. Um, the ground, I'd say, wasn't really ideal for him. The, the rain had got into it at that stage. And just the track, he just didn't seem at home on the track. And uh, getting him back to this surface, to this track, um, stepping up in trip, I think will suit him very well. And just looking back at his most recent win at Chelmsford, which came after the one we've just seen, I just got the impression that there was more to come from him. The race didn't really go for him. He ended up kind of getting into it quite early. And I thought he did quite well to, to, to hang on as well as he did. So I think there's more scope for him off, off his revised mark. And um, again, uh, you just wouldn't be surprised if his connections ha had a bit of an eye on this. He, he was never going to get into the big one, but they would have known that this, um, this consolation race was there. And, yeah, once again, I, I, I think he's overpriced now. I think the market may have overreacted to that run at Chester last time. Yeah, 12 to 1 then for the consolation race tomorrow. And, of course, all eyes will be on the Curra as well as we look ahead to the Irish derby. Um, some, some good news emerging from here that Russell Ryan, of course, is back today at Newmarket. He'll be heading over for the ride on Mojo Star. We've got high definition um, in there. Frankie's got a ride. McSweeney trying his luck again. Hurricane Lane. So uh, a really good renewal of this, Kevin. I know you've gone for one at a big price here. Yeah, I think it is a good renewal, Gina. Look, sometimes the Irish Derby, it can, it, it can end up being a bit of a procession for, for one of the main players at Epsom. Um, but we, we've got a real mix of form lines here. You know, we really do. It, it's, it's fascinating on paper and, and it's very competitive. Great to see three horses coming over from Great Britain as well, um, all of which feature quite prominently in your market there. Um, but look, the Irish Derby is a race I tend to like to go fishing at the bigger prices. And uh, I think I've found one in Arturo Toscanini. Um, he'd be the, the, the fourth or fifth string of Aiden O'Brien's five. But we've seen uh, down the years that that isn't the barrier to them running very well and sometimes even winning. And I, I think there's a good case to be made for, for Arturo Toscanini. Um, he won his maiden at the back end of last season, beating a few smart horses. Um, you know, Earlswood, who, who reposes in the derby, and Sir Lamarack and a few were close up behind him. Um, ran terrible in the field on his return, but got, very much got back on, on track in the Gallon Yule. He, that was over 10 furlongs at the Curra. He was second to Earlswood, but was absolutely crying out for a stronger test of stamina. You know, got caught badly flat-footed and was doing all his best work at the finish. 
Um, I thought the Queen's Vaz would suit him very well. Uh, and he ran very well there, Gina, but the race just didn't go for him again. You know, they didn't go quick that day. He was dropped in from a bad draw. He was three wide the whole way. He swung about five or six wide into the straight to, to try and make a bid. And I just felt he was he was going through the gears and he was going to run very well. And he got stopped in his tracks there just inside the two furlong pole. And that was pretty much game over. He was only beaten four and a half lengths. He's coming back down in trip here, which perhaps isn't ideal. But it's a rare Irish derby that isn't run at a proper gallop. And I think a real good test of stamina at a mile and a half will suit him well. Emmett McNamara rides. There'll be absolutely no pressure on him. I'd imagine he'll drop in from a, from his low draw. And he's just one that I could see powering home and potentially getting involved in the mix for the places and, and maybe even for the win. You never know. I, th I think he's overpriced at that. I'll tell you what, he's worth a few quid, isn't he? At 50 to 1 each way. Arturo Toscanini in the Irish Derby, uh, the third of Kevin's selections. Blow your horn in the consolation race. Australis in the Northumberland Plate, eight to one. Hopefully, it's a good weekend for you, Kevin. Thanks so much for all your thoughts. Yeah, thanks very much, Gina. If, if one of those cops will uh, will count that as a good weekend, <laughs> they're yeah, quite absolutely. big prices, but we'll hope they uh, will hope they they represent us well. Brilliant stuff. Thanks so much.